Hello students, today we are going to discuss about menstrual cycle. So before we start the topic, let me go through two terminologies. Here you can see one is a menarche, okay, and second one is a menopause. So what is a menarche and what is a menopause? So the duration in between menarche and menopause is considered as a reproductive period of a female. Okay, so let me see what is a menarche. It is the first menstruation begins at the puberty and uh, it is called menarche. So when female get first menstrual cycle start initiated or begin at the puberty and that is called menarche. Okay and the second terminology is a menopause. So it is the permanent cessation means the stop of a menstrual cycle means when the female get permanent stop or a cessation of a menstrual cycle is called menopause. So you must be remember what is a menarche and menopause. And the duration in between menarche and menopause is a reproductive period of a female. Now let me define about menstrual cycle and that is also considered as a reproductive cycle. So let me see what is a menstrual cycle. So menstrual cycle is a cyclic event starting from one menstruation until the next that they take place during the reproductive period. Okay, and that is a puberty to menopause. The duration is a puberty to menopause or we can say menarche to menopause of a woman life. Okay, so menstrual cycle is what? So menstrual cycle is a cyclic event or a hormonal changes starting from one menstrual uh, menstruation till the next and that take place during reproductive period. And as I told you, what is a reproductive period? Reproductive period is to a duration in between puberty or we can say menarche to menopause of a woman's life. Okay, and it duration is uh, each cycle will have a duration of 28 or 29 days. Okay, normally in female. Okay, so menstrual cycle is also seen in other primates also like monkeys and apes and all that. Okay, so other primates also show such a kind of a menstrual cycle. Cycle can be divided into two. Okay, we can say uh, these stages in we can divide into two. Ovarian cycle that is the changes in the ovary. Okay, and second is a uterine cycle that is the changes in the uterus. Okay, or oviduct and vagina. Here in this slide you can see phases of menstrual cycle that include menstrual phase that is from 1 to 5th day of a cycle. Then second one is a follicular phase that is also called proliferative phase that is from 5 to 13 days. Okay, here you can see this is a menstrual cycle. Okay, full cycle. This is a menstrual cycle in which here from starting from this first to 5th day is considered as a menstrual phase. And then after that 5th days here from this to this. Okay, that is considered as a follicular phase from 5th day to 13th day. Okay, and then ovulatory phase will be there. Okay, that is considered mostly 14th day of a menstrual cycle. And then finally, after 14th day, whatever the days are there, up to the 28 days, 15 to 28 days, it is considered as a secretory or a luteal phase. That is from 15 to 28 days. So for let me start with the menstrual phase. You know very well what are the changes will occur inside the ovary. So first of all when egg cell is produced at that time a primary follicle will be formed then primary follicle will be formed oocyte formation secondary follicle then it will get matured and finally it will convert into graphene follicle and now this graphene follicle is ready to release the egg cell and that is called ovulation and after releasing the egg cell now it will convert into a luteum or that is called corpus luteum okay so finally it will convert into corpus luteum and finally it is also degenerating so this is whole cycle inside the ovary okay so let me start with the menstruation phase menstrual phase that is so menstruation occurs only if the released ovum is not fertilized so be very clear if ovum is not get fertilized then only menstruation phase will occur Okay, and if lack of a menstruation occur, means female do not have any menses after, even after 28 days or lack of a menstruation occur. So, this may be indicative of a pregnancy. Okay, so it will indicate the pregnancy. If lack of a menstruation is there, it will be indicative of a pregnancy. Menstrual cycle will start with the menstrual flow and that is called bleeding. So, along with the endometrium, bleeding will occur. So, endometrium will come out during this phase along with the blood and that is called menstrual flow or the bleeding and it will last for 3 to 5 days. 
Okay, so be very clear what happened during this uh, this uh, phase. So first of all, this endometrium along with the blood, it will come out of the uterus. Okay, so innermost wall of a uterus will come out during this phase. Okay, along with the blood to the vagina. Okay, and it will last for the three to five days. And it is due to breakdown of endometrial lining and blood vessel of the uterus and that come out through the vagina. And menstruation occur if the released ovum is not fertilized. So be very clear this about this. So menstruation will occur only if this ovum or a secondary oocyte do not get fertilized. Okay, and if lack of menstruation is that, it is the indicative of a pregnancy that indicate that ovum get fertilized and that side is indicating the pregnancy and it's uh, as a result of that lack of menstruation will be observed. It may also be caused due to the stress or a poor health or a poor hygiene or it may be due to a lack of a nutrition. Next phase is a follicular phase. And uh, let me see what happened during this phase. So you know very well what are the gonadotropins. You have already learned in chapter 22 during uh, standard 11. Okay, so what are the gonadotropins? So gonadotropin involve or include LH and FSH. That is a luteinizing hormone and a follicular stimulating hormone. Okay, so the secretion of a gonadotropin, that is a secretion of a LH and FSH, will increase toward the end of a follicular phase. So be very clear what happened during this phase. So first of all, secretion of a gonadotropin, that is the LH and FSH, will be increases towards the end of a follicular phase. Okay, and gonadotropins in turn, what happened? Gonadotropin will in turn as a result of that will stimulate the follicular development you know very well follicular development is very important step over here so gonadotropin in turn stimulate follicular development as well as secretion of estrogen by the growing follicle okay so be very clear this gonadotropin hormone is responsible for the induction or a stimulation of a follicular development okay and as follicular development is occur it will start secretion of a one very important hormone and that is estrogen so these hormone these follicles responsible for secretion of estrogen and that is uh, under the effect of a gonadotropin especially under the effect of fsh and that is follicular stimulating hormone follicular or a proliferative phase will start from the fifth day and it will last up to the 13th day here you can see the gap or a duration that is the fifth day to 13th day Okay, so it start from the fifth day after menstruation and completed within 8 to 12 days. Or uh, during this phase, action of a gonadotropin, that is FSH and LH, from pituitary occurs. You know very well, pituitary gland is responsible for the secretion of FSH and LH under the effect of uh, hypothalamus. You know very well, hypothalamus uh, gland will secrete the releasing hormone. Okay, for the FSH and LH and uh, under the effect of hypothalamic releasing hormone, this pituitary gland will secrete, start secretion of FSH and LH. Okay, so let me see what is the function of FSH. So, FSH will stimulate development of a primary follicle and as a result of this, this primary follicle will get matured and will convert into graphene follicle. This is the mature form of a graphene follicle is a mature form of a primary follicle. Okay, so at the graphene follicle is formed, it is now ready for the ovulation or a release of a secondary oocyte and secretion of estrogen by graphene follicles. This graphene follicle is also responsible for secretion of estrogen. So now let me go through some functions of estrogen. What is the function of estrogen during these phases? Okay, so let me see. Estrogen will stimulate a proliferation of a ruptured uterine endometrium. As I told you, during menstruation phase, what happened? This endometrium will come out along with the blood. Okay, so now this endometrium will be reformed or rebuilt. Okay, and as it is under the effect of estrogen. So, proliferation of a ruptured uterine endometrium will occur in this phase and mucus lining of oviduct and vagina will occur over here. Okay, and development of a secretory sexual character is also responsible. Means uh, under the effect of uh, estrogen, it will be done. So, secondary sexual character of a female is uh, just due to estrogen effect, under the effect of estrogen. Then also they will do a suppression of FSS secretion. Okay, and also it will uh, do the secretion of... Uh, so, now let me discuss about next phase and that is the ovulatory phase. And now this ovary is ready for release of uh, ovum. 
and that phase is called ovulatory phase. But let me see what happened during this phase. So both LH and FSH, these both hormones will attain a peak level in the middle of a cycle and that is the day, 14th day. Okay, so at the 14th day of a menstrual cycle, both LH and FSH attain a peak level in the middle of a cycle. As FSH and LH both attain their peak level, okay, it will start rapid secretion of LH and it will leading to the its maximum level and during the mid cycle and such a phenomena is called LH surge. Okay, so what is the LH surge? LH surge is a rapid secretion of LH and it will lead to its maximum level during the mid cycle and it is called LH surge. It will happen during the ovulatory phase. Due to LH surge, it will induce the rupture of a graphene follicle and thereby it will release of a ovum in the form of a secondary oocyte. And such a phenomena is called ovulation. Okay, so as LH will be increased, the rapid in increase in the level of a LH, it will be responsible for induction or stimulation of a rupturing of a graphene follicle. As this graphene follicle rupture, what happened here you can observe? Okay, it will rupture and as a result of that, from out means inside there, there is a secondary oocyte and it will, it will come out of the ruptured graphene follicle. And now this uh, secondary oocyte will be released. And such a phenomena of a releasing of a secondary oocyte from the graphene follicle, such a phenomena is called ovulation. Okay, and that will be occur under the effect of LH surge. So now let me summarize ovulatory phase. So you can understand now ovulatory phase is a day which is the 14th day of a menstrual cycle. Okay, and during which what happened? LH and FSH both will attain a peak level in the middle of a cycle. Okay, and uh, it will start rapid secretion of LH that is called LH surge. As a result of that, it will induce a rupture of a graphene follicle and thereby what happened as a result of that? If graphene follicle ruptured, what happened? Ovulation will occur and it will, it will release the egg cell or a ovum out of that and that is in the form of a secondary oocyte on 14th day of a menstrual cycle. Here you can see this is the ovary. Okay, in which you can see here, this is the graphene follicle, which is already ruptured. Okay, so during the graphene follicle, whatever the graphene follicle is there, it is responsible for the secretion of estrogen. Okay, but as it LH surge happen, as a result of that, the egg cell or ovum or a secondary oocyte will be released out of that. Okay, and now this graphene follicle, which is ruptured graphene follicle, is now called graphene follicle, is converted into corpus luteum. Okay, now this corpus luteum will start secretion of a progesterone. So, what will happen during the graphene follicle? So, graphene follicle was responsible for the secretion of a estrogen. But as is ovulate, what happened? It will rupture and as a result of that, there is ruptured, this ruptured graphene follicle is now called corpus luteum. Okay, and now this corpus luteum is responsible for secretion of a progesterone. After ovulatory phase, next phase will be secretory or luteal phase. So after ovulation, graphene follicle is transformed into the yellow endocrine mass and that is called corpus luteum. Already I told you this is the follicles, primary, secondary and then graphene follicle. As it gets ruptured, you can see here, this is ovulation. Okay, after ovulation, it will convert into corpus luteum. Here you can observe. Okay, and this corpus luteum will start secretion of a progesterone. By the action of a progesterone, let me see what is the action of a progesterone or the function of a progesterone. So, it will do endometrium attain a maximum vasculatory. Okay, so as a, under the effect of a progesterone, endometrium attain their maximum vascularity, then thickness and softness. This is all these characteristics is just due to progesterone effect. Okay, and thus the uterus get ready for the implantation. This endometrium is playing very important role during implantation and pregnancy. Okay, we will learn in detail in next lectures. So, what is the role of endometrium during the pregnancy and implantation? So, this all is just due to the progesterone. Okay, and FSS secretion is inhibited to prevent the development of a secondary ovarian follicle. So, FSS secretion is also inhibited by the effect of a progesterone. So during pregnancy, all events of a menstrual cycle will be stopped and there is a no menstruation during the pregnancy. Okay, so if fertilization does not occur, 
Suppose fertilization occur, then it will be result into the pregnancy. Okay, and if fertilization occur, these all events will be stopped. Okay, there is a no menstruation at that time. And if fertilization does not occur, at that time only this corpus luteum degenerate, here you can see it will degenerate and it will cause disintegration of endometrium and it will lead to next menstruation cycle. Here you can see new next menstruation cycle will be initiated as this corpus luteum is a degenerated. Okay, so by this way this cycle will be continued and new cycle will be initiated. Okay, so here two words are given, two terminologies are given, which you know very well. Now, so menarche is the first menstruation during the puberty and menopause is a stopping of menstruation cycle at the age of nearby 50 years of age and that is in the female. Here in this slide, you can see very good diagram and this diagram is from textbook. So, by study this diagram, you can know changes in the pituitary hormone here. Okay, so these diagram shows you a changes in the pituitary hormone that is FSH and LH level. Okay, so here it is indicated, this graph is indicated with the days here. Okay, you can see here 1 to 28 days. So what happened during the first day? What happened during the third day? Here a level of hormones are also given in the form of a graph. So this diagram is very important from a point of view of exam board as well as NEET exams. Okay, so you have to practice this for the multiple time. So changes in the pituitary hormone, this is the FSH and LH level. Here you can see LH and FSH, both level you can observe here. What happened during 14th day of a cycle? What happened during the 9th day of a cycle? What will increase and what will decrease? So you can study this diagram. Okay, and these changes in the ovary also you can see here. So, at the first day, this uh, this is the in this form, primary follicle, then secondary, and finally it will convert into graphene follicle at these days, 11 to 13 days, and then on the 14th day, ovulation will occur. And now, up to 15 and that phase, you can see it will convert into corpus luteum and further it will degenerate nearby 27 to 29 days. Okay, so you can also observe in this diagram changes in the ovary, that is ovarian events. Okay, and finally here you can see the one graph which indicating a changes in ovarian hormone and that is a especially estrogen and progesterone level. Okay, so you may get the idea at which day you can see estrogen level will be high and progesterone level will be low. Okay, and here you can observe all this. Okay, what, what are the events of estrogen and progesterone? So, changes in ovarian hormone also you can observe here. And here, finally, this structure is indicating a changes in the uterus. That is a uterine event. Okay, so be very clear about this. All the phases of a menstrual cycle. So, menstruation is a 1 to 5 days. Then 5 days onward up to 13 days is the follicular phase. Then 14th day is called ovulation phase. And then 15 onward it is called UTL phase. So this is your homework for today's lecture and before we finish this lecture, let me summarize whole topic by using one animation video. So look at this video. There are three phases in the life of a living organism. Juvenile, reproductive and senescence. During the reproductive phase, organisms give birth to offspring. Interestingly, most organisms display certain morphological and physiological changes during the reproductive phase. Human females, for instance, experience the menstrual cycle, which is defined as cyclical changes in the genital system during the reproductive phase. Incidentally, a woman experiences her first menstrual cycle, called the menarche, at the onset of puberty usually between the ages of 9 and 12. Occurring approximately every 28 days, a single menstrual cycle consists of four phases. Menstrual phase, follicular or proliferative phase, ovulatory phase, and lastly, the luteal or secretory phase. Each phase of the menstrual cycle is marked by simultaneous changes in the uterus, ovary, and the secretion of hormones. For instance, during the menstrual phase, the endometrial lining of the uterus 
and its blood vessels break down and mix with blood, mucus, and other cell debris to form menses. The menses are discharged through the vagina as menstruation or menstrual flow, which lasts for three to five days from the beginning of the menstrual cycle. Interestingly, the absence of menstruation indicates pregnancy or ovarian disorders such as polycystic ovarian disorder or even factors such as stress and ill health. The menstrual phase is followed by the follicular phase which occurs between days 6 and 14 of the menstrual cycle. During this phase, the primary follicle in the ovary matures into a graphian follicle. Simultaneously, the endometrium undergoes proliferation, a process of regeneration which results in the formation of a new, thick endometrium. The follicular phase is followed by the ovulatory phase, which occurs during the middle of each menstrual cycle. During this phase, the graphian follicle ruptures to release an ovum or egg cell into the pelvic cavity in a process called ovulation. The ovulatory phase is succeeded by the luteal or secretory phase, the last phase of the menstrual cycle, which occurs between days 16 and 28 of the menstrual cycle. This phase sees the transformation of the remaining graphian follicle into a yellow mass called the corpus luteum. The endometrium too thickens and its blood vessels become coiled and enlarged. Interestingly, the endometrium and corpus luteum play a vital role during the early stages of conception. For instance, a fertilized egg gets embedded in the endometrium and derives nourishment from it. The corpus luteum, on the other hand, starts secreting progesterone that helps maintain the endometrium and encourages the growth of the developing embryo. Conversely, in the absence of fertilization, the corpus luteum degenerates and triggers the breakdown of the endometrium. This marks the start of menstruation and the beginning of a new menstrual cycle. Did you know that the phases of the menstrual cycle are controlled by the interplay of different hormones secreted by the ovary and the pituitary gland? At the onset of menses, the anterior pituitary gland increases the secretion of the two gonadotropic hormones, luteinizing hormone or LH and follicle stimulating hormone or FSH that simulate the development of primary follicles. However, the amount of estrogen and progesterone released by the ovary during this time is less which causes the thinning of the endometrium. The release of LH and FSH keeps increasing and during the follicular stage these two hormones stimulate the maturation of the primary follicle into the graphian follicle. Moreover, LH and FSH stimulate the maturing follicles to release estrogen, a hormone that helps in the proliferation of the endometrium. The increased levels of estrogen in turn cause the anterior pituitary gland to release a surge of LH and FSH. So much so, that by the ovulation stage, the levels of FSH and LH in the blood are at their peak. This LH surge causes ovulation by rupturing the graphian follicle and turning the follicle's remnants into the corpus luteum. 
the estrogen level in the body too reaches its peak and we see a gradual thickening of the endometrium. However, once the corpus luteum begins secreting large amounts of progesterone, an FSH and LH inhibiting hormone, the levels of both these hormones drop, which in turn also lowers the levels of estrogen in the body. However, the endometrium continues to thicken because of an increase in the level of progesterone. Incidentally, the corpus luteum will keep secreting progesterone if a fertilized egg gets embedded in the endometrium. However, in the absence of a fertilized egg, the corpus luteum stops releasing progesterone and degenerates. A drop in the level of progesterone, in turn, triggers menstruation as well as the restart of the release of LH and FSH by the pituitary gland. Menstrual cycles normally stop once a woman reaches her 50s. This phase is called menopause. The menstrual cycle is an important process in a woman's body and it consists of four phases which are controlled by hormones released by the ovary and the pituitary gland. In next lecture, we will learn about fertilization and implantation. So, till that, goodbye.